Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Venom Smart Temp. Uh, maybe not something that uh, is uh, super desirable anymore, but at one time uh, was a very, very useful uh, Nitro device. It still is a very useful Nitro device. Uh, but I'll get into why not so much anymore here momentarily. Uh, if you're into nitro engines, nitro vehicles, anything at all to do with the nitro side of the RC hobby, please give me a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and also, before we get into the Venom Smart Temp here, um, I had had a uh, viewer ask uh, about Molly Coat, and I said I would, uh, in the beginning of this video, uh, have a real quick word about it. So let me do that really quickly. Um, so that is the Molly coat. Uh, I bought this big tube and this stuff is not cheap. Uh, I've had this probably about three years now at this point. Um, and so what I do, you can buy this and, uh, essentially it's, it's not, I make these out of, uh, take a brand new, uh, baggie, put some Molly coat in it and I just use this as a dispenser. Um, but you can also buy this in a little white baggie, which is kind of like that, and, you know, dispense it out of there. Uh, but and those are like three, four dollars. Uh, this thing was like 30 bucks uh, for this tube. This stuff is not cheap at all. But uh, I used to use associated green slime, uh, uh, O-ring o -ring, uh, lubricant to me is very, very, very important on nitro engines. Uh, I don't, I do not worry at all about leaks anymore. Uh, leaks on engines, that's something I dealt with uh, for my first couple years of nitro engines. But uh, once I got my methods down and learned O-ring maintenance, uh, my engines uh, do not leak air. Uh, so anyways, but uh, I used to use associated green slime and uh, I found that that stuff changes consistency over time. It hardens. Uh, changes color. Uh, so uh, I did my research and uh, heard only really good things about Molly Coat. Uh, and uh, so, you know, a couple, two, three years ago, I made the, uh, took the plunge and bought the big tube here. And uh, if I ever do go through this, I will buy another. Um, this stuff is, my opinion, uh, the far, far superior uh, O-ring lubricant. Uh, I work it into my carburetor boots. Um, there's a, a lot of stuff uh, that this is good uh, for lubricating, sealing. Uh, I even use this on some stuff uh, as like a temporary glue. Uh, it's so thick. Uh, watch, I'm going to make a full line of myself. Okay, I'll just do something light to just prove the point. You can use it to like temporarily hold stuff. It's so thick, you know what I mean, that uh, it'll hold something in place temporarily. Anyways, that's beside the point. So that's the Molly Coat. I wanted to show uh, the Molly Coat 111 compound from Dow Corning. Uh, that is my uh, recommended O ring lubricant. All right, sorry about that. Let's talk about the Venom Smart Temp. Now, let's say it is 1998, right? Uh, you're jamming out on, what are you jamming out on? Pearl Jam or maybe Alice in Chains or something, right? And uh, and of course you got a Savage, right? We, we, we all had Savages. So let's say on that Savage, you know, because, you know, again, it's what year did I say it was? <laughs> it's night. 1996 is that what I said it's 1996 uh you got a savage right you're, you're having a blast uh you don't have a computer radio you got an old am radio so you're running a fail safe on it right you're running a standalone uh fail safe uh you are also uh because um you know it's just how it is <laughs> You are also, sorry, I set this down. You're also running the MIP temperature sensor uh, display gauge thingy here. 
uh, you have this hooked around uh, the cooling head on your Savage. And you probably have that mounted somewhere on the radio box uh, to where you can look down and check the temperature of your engine, right? So you're safe from failure. Uh, you, you're going to keep an eye on your engine, make sure it ain't overheating, right? Because that's what that's for. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and then also, because it's a Savage and because you're cool, and it's 1996 and we're, we're having a great time, uh, we also got a little uh, battery uh, display, little uh, battery monitor uh, mounted on the neat. I've never seen these on anything but Savages, right? It's like this is a Savage thing for some reason. But so you got your little Volt, uh, your battery meter. You know what? That'd be interesting just for poops and giggles. Let's check the... Uh, and instead of using a receiver for this, you plug this stuff into your receiver. Uh, I'm just using uh, my uh, servo tester. So let me plug in my battery. And then I'll plug this into here. And I'll see uh, how much juice my battery has. Uh-oh. Why do we have that? Is this thing dead? I didn't think it was dead. You know what? If it was a 4.8 volt battery... What the heck's going on? Oh, you know what? Does it have something to do with it? It's not it has anything to do with it being a servo tester, right? I mean, uh, huh? I thought this battery was charged. Um, maybe it isn't. Uh, apparently, it isn't. Let me go ahead and try this other one. Yeah, apparently. Uh, well, now, hold on. Oh, that's... That's max. Duh. Why am I thinking that it should have all of them lit? And if there's only one lit... that That's what threw me off. I'm thinking that it's a meter. Like, uh, all of them are lit up to the, you know, the power that it is. So if it has halfway power, like the first four would be lit, right? Up to there. That's what I was thinking. That's why I thought the battery was low. But no... Uh, it only displays one light, um, at, oh, no, hold on, it's at, that's at six volt, same thing. It only lights one light, so it is saying that, yeah, that's on the max side, the green side, not the red low side. That threw me off, my bad. So, yeah, we got a fully charged battery. All right, so, um, <clears throat> you've got, uh, some Wu-Tang Clan, right, playing on the uh, boombox in the background. You got your Savage with your 27 megahertz radio. Uh, you got your Volt Watch there telling you how much juice your battery has. You got your MIP uh, temperature sensor telling you your temperature of your engine. And you got your failsafe hooked up to make sure you don't have an engine runaway, right? So you are decked out. Your Savage is ready to go, right? And then, what do you see at the local hobby shop? Not cheap either. Hobby Town, uh, forty-seven ninety-nine retail, fifty-nine ninety-nine. Um, but you're like, hey, I can get rid of all three of these devices, right? I can get rid of the failsafe. I can get rid of my MIP temperature sensor, and I can get rid of my voltage meter. And just have one device that does all three. That, my friends, is the Venom Smart Temp, uh, which is a, a current and peak engine temp sensor. It tells you uh, overheat fail safe. Uh, what is that? What's it beep to tell you you're overheating or something? Is that what that is? It doesn't sh certainly doesn't shut the engine off. Um, digital volt meter. And a radio failsafe, right? All that in one. Uh, and why? What I was saying earlier about um, how these aren't uh, nowadays. Most of our radios are what would be considered, you know, in 1996, a computer radio. Um, and so most most modern radios have built-in failsafes, uh, and um, a lot of 
uh, radio and receiver combos will tell you your voltage uh, of the receiver battery in the display. Uh, and you can get telemetry sensors uh, for your temperature to display in your transmitter. So there's other ways to do this stuff nowadays. But anyways, so there is our Venom Smart Temp uh, sensor uh, module there. And that's uh, no bigger than the MIP uh, temperature sensor, uh, very slightly. Um, so let's go ahead and fire this thing up again. That is your temp sensor. So you would put that uh, the way you hook these up. Let me grab the old Rossi Black Magic here. And uh, I'll show you how you uh, attach to these temperature sensors. So uh, I think uh, it's always said that it's the best place to run this is on the very bottom uh, groove, right, of your heat sink head. So, oh, this might be tough to get on because this head is oddly shaped. Let's see. Uh, no, okay, yeah, it opens up pretty big. All right, so you want to put it all the way down to that bottom groove, all right? Will it fit in there? You know what, the bottom groove uh, is smaller. Than, oh no, it, it fits in there. It's kind of tight, which is fine. Uh, tight is okay for this. You just definitely want it uh, seated in there fully, right? So you get your sensor. There it is, right? Seated up in there really good inside your fin. And then you take uh, this right here and you push that in all the way up to tighten it in place. There we go. So you see how uh, that uh, pulls it tight right to where now it's held in there really good that is a properly uh, mounted uh, temperature sensor right there all right we're going to take it back off now and like i said let's go ahead and fire this thing up all right so you normally plug it into a receiver i'm going to plug it into uh, my servo tester here go ahead and fire it up and we will plug it in and nice, nice, clear, bright readout on here. Uh, this is America, so we don't do Celsius. Uh, seven volts, it's good uh, voltage for our receiver pack. Uh, hit this button once to swap it to Fahrenheit. So uh, apparently it is 77 degrees uh, here uh, in the room that I'm in, 76 degrees. Uh, and, you know, just to test it, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the sensor and see if it picks up uh, the heat from my finger. So we're at 77 there. I'm going to go ahead and grab it, give it a good squeeze. Come on, ooh, 90, 92. Yep, it is uh, sensing the heat quite well from my fingers. Can I get a couple more? Yeah, 94. Uh, and then, uh, uh, I guess that's, you hit that, get your maximum temperature. Um, and then to set your fail safe, um, is the button right there. You would hold your, uh, receiver. This is when you have this hooked up to a receiver with your transmitter, hold your transmitter to the position that you want the fail safe to go to, uh, normally full break. But I've gotten away from using full brake for failsafe, and here's why. Um, I've bur I burnt up a servo uh, by uh, forgetting to turn the car off, right? So the receiver, the transmitter was off. Uh, it went into failsafe, and it just it went to full brake, uh, and it burned up the servo because it was just holding full brake with all of its might uh, for however long, five minutes, until I realized what was happening. Uh, and I killed that servo. So I'll either do neutral or very slight break uh, for my failsafe. 
Uh, if I do a digital fail safe, I most of the times just use a throttle return spring or band uh, for my fail safe. Uh, but anyways, uh, so that's how you would set the fail safe. You plug this into your receiver and then you plug your servo into the jack right there. Uh, and yeah, uh, that is, uh, shows, it cycles, I guess, back and forth between uh, your current voltage and the current temperature. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool device. Uh, certainly could even still be used nowadays. Uh, you certainly could, uh, heck, I'm sure a lot of people are still running 27 megahertz radios nowadays. So uh, certainly a lot of people could get some use out of this. So anyways, uh, that is the Venom Smart Temp, uh, a cool vintage uh, nitro item uh, that we ran on our nitro vehicles and we still could. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Y'all have a great day.